Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. Continuing with our journey through the Zahd al Mustaqni' of Ikhtisar al Muqni' lil Imam al Hajjawi. Um, we've reached now by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. The last of the conditions of the Salah that the Imam he speaks about is a niyyah, the intention. So a niyyah lughatan, linguistically lughatan is al qasd. Al qasd is that which you seek out, that which is an objective for you, a goal. Okay? And istilahan, technically, it's azmul qalb ala fa'l al ibadah taqarrubun ila Allah ta'ala. Azmul qalb ala fa'l al ibadah taqarrubun ila Allah ta'ala. It's to, um, it's to insist that the heart is upon an act of worship as a means of drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's to make a soul uh, a strong intention, to insist that the heart is upon an act of worship for drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the ulama, they speak about niyyah, they speak about it from a different perspectives and different angles. One of them they say is niyyatul ma'mul lahu. Niyyatul ma'mul lahu. This is that your intention has to be purified for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That everything that you do from the acts of worship, they are solely for Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is not the one that the ulama in the books of fiqh, the jurisprudence, they speak about. Okay, this is the one that you find in the books of akhlaq and aqidah and other places. Wa niyatul amal is the one that we are speaking about. Okay, the one which is pertaining to the action itself, niyatul amal. Not niyatul ma'mul. Niyatul ma'mul is who you're doing it for. Niyat al-amal is the act of worship itself. This is what the ulama in their books of fiqh they speak about. And they break this down into two further categories, okay? Or two fawaid, fa'idatain, fa'idatani. Two benefits. One of them is that uh, the niyyah is tamizu al-ibadat and al-adat. That with the intention you can separate the act of worship from that which is just habitual, okay? Or that which is mundane. So for example, somebody may want to wash in a hot day, on a hot day, but is that washing, is it for ghusl or is it for cooling one's, oneself down? So outwardly, the action looks as though it's the same action, but what is differentiating it is the intention, right? So it differentiates the ibadat anil adat from the habitual actions or the mundane actions. And also the second point is Tamizul Ibadat Ba'duha and Ba'd. Ba'duha min Ba'd. That the intention it differentiates the act of worship itself from other acts of worship. So for example somebody is praying for rakat. But what is he praying? Is it praying for rakat nafal? Is it praying the Sunnah? Is it the Fard of Asr or the Fard of Dhuhr? So based upon the intention we differentiate in that way, okay? And the place of the intention, as many of the ulama have said, it's not upon the tongue, it's something which is found in the heart. And some of them went as far as saying that if you make the intention on the tongue, then this is an innovation which is hated and disliked in the religion. This was the statement of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He was very severely against that. And the niyyah is not something which is difficult. Somebody doesn't have to stand there as you find many people, they're affected like this, they stand in the salah and they keep repeating it time and time. In fact, they go as far as missing the takbiratul ihram. Some of them will miss surah al-fatiha part of it, if not all of it, because they keep whispering to themselves what they're trying to do. But the reality of the niyyah, as you will come to know, is that it's something which the act of worship cannot be done except with. So it doesn't require much concentration. What requires concentration is the first part that we mentioned, niyat al ma'mulahu, that who am I doing it for? That's what you're always trying to fight against and concentrate with. That you don't want any whisperings of shaitan to come and take your reward away. In the sense that you're praying and now somebody walks into the room, so you start to beautify your prayer. You're beautifying it for the person who walked in instead of Allah Azawajal. That's where the battle is. But in terms of the actual niyat itself for the act of worship, that's very simple. Okay? And so some of the ulama, they said, لَوْ كَلَّفَنَ اللَّهُ عَمَلًا بِلَا نِيَّةٍ لَكَانَ مِنْ تَقْلِيفٍ مَا لَا يُطَاقٍ Had Allah Azawajal commanded us to do an act of worship without an intention, it would have been 
from a command which we would not have been able to do. Too difficult. Can you do an act of worship without intending it? It's impossible. That you intend to pray, you, you want to pray, but you're not intending it. So the reality of the niyyah is that as soon as you've left your house, why did you leave your house? You left your house because you were coming to the masjid to pray. So your niyyah has started already. Why were you making wudu? To pray. So niyyah is very simple. It doesn't require the person to stand there forever and ever and to go on and on. <coughs> Excuse me. So the imam, he says, فَيَجِبُوا أَنْ يَنْوِيَا عَيْنَ صَلَاةٍ مُعَيَّنَةٍ It's obligatory that the person, he intends a specific salah. He has a specific intention for a spe specific salah. What does this mean? The ulama, they say, for example, at the time of dhuhr, somebody gets up and he prays four raka'at. This is well and good. But if he didn't in intend to pray dhuhr specifically, then his salah is not going to be valid. Because he did, he did not intend to pray specific. He didn't make ta'yeen of the niyyah. He didn't specify that I am praying dhuhr. Okay? So he just got up and he prayed four raka'at. This is not acceptable. He has to intend the specific prayer if it's a specific prayer. If it's a salatul mu'ayyina, okay, if it's a specific prayer, like the obligatory prayers are, or some of the uh, sunnah prayers are like witr and sunnah and rawatib, these are specific prayers, then the person has to intend them specifically. Another narration in the madhab is that the person doesn't have to do this. It suffices to intend the obligation of the time. So for example, a person comes to the masjid, now he's completely forgotten what he's supposed to be praying. Is it dhuhr, is it asr? He's confused. He can't recollect. So what he does, he says, I'm praying the obligation of this time. Okay? So that would suffice for him as a niyyah. He doesn't have to intend it to be dhuhr. Because he's not sure, is it dhuhr, is it asr? For whatever reason, it's gone from his mind. Right? Maybe he needs to pray maghrib, he's not sure. So when he's with the jama'ah, he says, whatever this prayer is obligatory for in this time, that's what I'm praying. I'm intending the obligation of the time. So the other opinion in the madhab is that this suffices. Tayyib. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, وَلَا يُشْتَرَةُ فِي الْفَضْ And it's not necessity that he makes the intention that this is an obligation. This is fard or this is wajib that I am praying. Okay? Because by virtue of the fact that he stood up and he said, I am praying Salat al dhuhr this will suffice as an intention. Because by virtue of that intention, it's already understood that it's fard. Because he didn't intend to pray the Sunan al-Rawatib. He didn't intend to pray, naf uh, pray Nafil al-Mutlaq, an open Nafil, okay, which is not connected to time or place. So he didn't have any of those intentions. He intended, I'm going to pray dhuhr that sufficed. Okay? He doesn't have to intend that it's obligatory. The ta'yeen of dhuhr suffices. Uh, so he doesn't have to intend that, nor does he have to intend that it's ada. Okay, the next thing he says, ada. Ada is that he's praying in the time. So the person doesn't have to make the intention that I'm praying in the time, because by virtue of the fact that he's praying in time, that's already sufficed. He doesn't have to go into these details, what the imam is telling us. Well, qadha, and if it's a prayer that is being made up, he doesn't have to... Uh, intent either because by virtue of the fact that he's praying outside of the time it necessitates that it's qada anyway okay and also nafil the person doesn't have to pray that it's nafil uh, doesn't have to intend that it's a nafil right going back to the previous point of being ada which is the salah in its time and qada which is the salah outside of its time Sheikh Ahmed Khalil he said one of the ta'lil one of the reasonings for not having to have this intention is because if a person intends to pray ada, meaning he intended to pray in the time, but it happened to he happened to find out later that it was outside of the time, right? Then this ijma, this consensus that his salah is valid. Likewise, the converse: if he happened, if he intended to pray qadha salah, he thought he was outside of the time, he was making up a prayer, but then later he found out he was in the time. There's also consensus that his salah is valid. So this supports what the author is saying, that there's no need to intend that it's ada, which means it's in the time, nor does he need to intend that it's qadha, which is that it's out of the time. He just intends the particular prayer that he's praying, okay? And based off the fact that it's in time, then it means it's ada. If it's out of time, it automatically means it's qadha. وَلَا إِعَادَتِهِنَّ وَلَا إِعَادَ Salatul Okay? 
If there's a reason for somebody to repeat a prayer, like the first prayer was invalid, he didn't pray on wudu, he forgot, uh, and he prayed without wudu, or he's come to a masjid, where he's already prayed in one masjid, he's come to another masjid, and they're establishing the jama'ah there, it's recommended sunnah for him to pray the second jama'ah in the second masjid. But in this situation, he doesn't have to make those intentions that he made before. Like he doesn't have to intend again that it's dhuhr, or that it's uh, fard. Okay, because virtue of when he goes and he, he knows that that second jama'ah is going to be fard and dhuhr. So in conclusion, what the imam is trying to say to us, he's trying to say to us, keep it very simple. All you have to do is to make the ta'yeen of the salat al-mu'ayyin. That if you want to pray dhuhr and you come to the masjid, you just intend that it's dhuhr. You don't have to have these other intentions. That is it salat al-ada, is it salat al-qada? Okay, that I have to intend that it's fard. No, by virtue of the fact that it's in the time, okay, and it's dhuhr, then that suffices you as an intention. The author, he says, وَيَنْوِي مَعَ الْتَحْرِيمَ He makes the, um, the intention with the takbirat al-ihram. Okay, so it has to be uh, as a minimum, as a last case scenario, it has to be with the takbirat al-ihram. وَلَهُ تَقْدِيمُهَا عَلَيْهَا بِزَمْنِ يَسِيرِ فِي الْوَقْتِ However, if he wanted to, he can do it before the takbirat al-ihram in a short time. Okay, so the person wants to make intention. What, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? Do you intend not to pray any of the five prayers in the day? You already intended that you're going to pray all the five salawat, right? On their time, in the masjid, or wherever your musalla is. So you're already intending throughout the day to pray the salawat. But what the author is telling us, He's telling us that that doesn't suffice. You have to make a specific intention before the takbirat al-ihram is made. And if you wanted to do it slightly before that, the takbirat al-ihram, not with it, then you could do it waqtan yaseer. You can do it a little bit of time before, as long as it's within the time of the prayer, not before the time of the prayer. So dhuhr, I cannot intend to pray dhuhr one hour before the time of dhuhr comes in. Once the time of dhuhr has come in, I can start to make my intention Okay, that I'm going to pray dhuhr and it's going to be fard wherever I pray, right, in the masjid, etc. Uh, Imam al-Khalwati in his hashia of Muntadah al-Irada, he says that this zaman al-Yasir, this small time, wherein the author said that you can make the intention before the takbirat al-Ihram, within a small time, he said that this is the same time as what is expected or understood in al-muwalat. Remember al-muwalat in purification in wudu? Muwalat is that you ensure. What is muwalat? No nope, delaying between the washing of the obligatory limbs. So if you've washed one limb, then you have to get to washing the next limb before that limb that you washed dries up. Okay? In a normal, customarily normal time. Okay? Some ulama, they put it at like five or ten minutes. But other ulama, they say there's no dhabit. There's no specification of what that time is. But Imam al-Khalwati, he's saying that the, uh, the niyyah, the time for the niyyah to be made, what the author is saying, a little bit of time. The little bit of time is referring to what is accepted in muwalat. Okay? As mentioned by Shaykh Mutlaq Jasr. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, it doesn't matter. He said, you can have the niyyah, even an hour before you pray, as long as it's within the time of the salah. Why does he say this? Because the niyyah, it has two considerations. It's this habu dhikr. It's this habu dhikr is that you ensure, it's recommended, highly recommended, that you ensure you are remembering what you are doing. So you don't, you're not halfway in the prayer, you shouldn't have your mind wandering outside of the salah. This is something which is highly recommended. It's this habu dhikr that you Remember the act of worship you are doing. The second thing attached to the niyyah is, is this habul hukm that you ensure that the ruling of the niyyah is retained throughout the act of worship. So as long as the ruling of the niyyah is retained throughout the act of worship, then your worship is going to be fine, right? As a conclusion, what the imam was saying there in the discussion of the time of the niyyah is that it should be made before the takbirat al-ihram, meaning either with the takbirat al-ihram and you have the allowance to make it a little time before that. And the little time before that, as Imam al-Khalwati said, is that is what is understood for the time of muwalat. Tayyib. فَإِنْ قَطَعَهَا فِي أَثْنَاءِ If the person 
breaks his niya in the middle of the prayer. He decides for whatever reason now, I'm not going to continue this prayer. And he breaks his niya to continue the prayer, right? Then of course his salah becomes invalid, right? Why? Yes, but think about some of the definitions and some of the things we mentioned pertaining to the conditions. You need to have a niyyah to pray, that's for sure. And also, we said that the conditions, one of the definitions of the condition, remember that it has to be throughout the prayer, right? Not like the rukun and the wajibat, that they change from position of prayer to, pray, to the position. So that is one of the differences, that the condition has to be throughout the prayer. So if the niyyah is not there throughout the prayer, then obviously the prayer is not valid, right? Aw taraddada batalat. Or if the person now starts to have not doubt, but he starts to think to himself, shall I break the prayer or shall I not break the prayer? So he's praying, somebody's knocking on the door. And he's thinking to himself, shall I break the prayer? You know, let me go and break it. Then he says, no, I shouldn't break it. Then he says, yeah, but you know, I should break it. Postman might have come with some really special delivery for me. I have to catch him. Then he says, no, I'm going to stick in my prayer. So here's taraddud fin niyyah. He's going back and forth here with his intention. What's the ruling? The author says, batalat that his salah has become invalid. Why? Because one of the characteristics of the correct niyyah is that it has to have jazm. Jazm is that it has to have, you have to be committed to it 100%. Okay? And if you're not committed to it 100%, then your niyyah is not valid. So in your heart, the intention means that I'm committed to doing this act. Not of, I might do it, I might not. That's not the intention that is required for the act of worship. The intention that is required for the act of worship, I'm doing it. I'm going ahead to do it. And that has to remain the jazm. Okay? وَإِذَا شَكَّ فِيهَا إِسْتَعْنَفَهَا The author says, but now is another situation. The first one was taraddud. Shall I break? Shall I not break? This situation that the person is doubtful. Did I make the niyyah or did I not make the niyyah? Right? He's praying and now for whatever reason, shaitan's whispering to him. So he's saying to himself, did I make the niyyah or did I not make the niyyah? What's the reality of this situation before we get into it? We mentioned it in passing. Huh? It's what's what's it's not it's not real, it's not a real situation except for somebody who has this um, disease of waswas of whisperings. Because we said the reality of the niya is that you cannot do an act of worship without niya. Right? True or not? You made the wudu, why did you make wudu? It was for the salah. You came to the masjid, why? For the salah. You put it in your third, why? For the salah etc etc so this shak is very strange it's a very strange mas'ala as uh, Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala explained in his explanation so if the person has doubt the author is saying that if he doubts that he have niya or not he has to start again why? what is the illa? the reasoning? they say the illa here is that there is shak so in shak nabni ala yaqeen we have to act upon certainty so certainty in this situation is that he didn't make the intention according to the author's uh, explanation, right? The author's understanding. So in the, in the position, in the situation of a person who's doubted, did he, did he make niya or not? He's having shak. What do you do? Nabni al yaqeen We build upon certainty, which is that he didn't have the intention. So his salah is invalid. He has to restart his intention. Okay? This is the author's opinion. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala from the Hanbali Imams, he said no. He said it's haram for somebody to leave the salah in this situation. So he has a complete opposite uh, fatwa. Why? He says because ma'loom, it's understood 100% that the person only came into the act of worship with the niyyah. So there's no doubt that his niyyah is there. So there shouldn't be any shak in the fact that did he have niyyah or did he not have niyyah. What if somebody has the doubt after the salah? He's made the taslim and then he has the doubt. Here, this ijma, the ulama, all of them, they say, no, need to repeat the salah. Because once the prayer is done, you don't pay attention to the doubts. Once the act of worship is done, do not pay attention to the doubts. Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation, he mentions that if somebody has azm to do something which is going to break the salah, like somebody intends in the salah, I'm going to speak. Somebody intends in the salah, I'm going to eat something. Right? For example... Somebody intends in the salah, I'm going to turn away from the qibla. Now, does this break the salah or does this not break the salah? He said the opinion of the madhab is that it doesn't break the salah until the act is done in of itself. 
So it's not, in, it's not just the intention. I intend to break my salah. That's not going to break your salah, right? It's actually if the person went ahead and did something, that will break the person's salah. Like if he intends to do something which will break the salah, like eating, that is not enough for his salah to be broken. It's only if the act was carried out. Tayyib. وَإِنْ قَلَبَ مُنْفَرِدٌ فَرْضَهُ نَفْلًا فِي وَقْتِهِ الْمُتَسِعْ جَاز So now the author is going to speak about some situations with regards to changing of the niyyah within the act of worship itself, right? So he said, if a munfarid, the munfarid is the one who is praying by himself. If he changes his niyyah in the prayer of fard to nafl, he's praying a fard, but he wants to change it to nafl. And if he does this when there's enough time for him to have done it, change it to a nafal and then after do the fard then the author is saying it's permissible jaz okay what's the illa they say because the salah that he was praying the fard it has two aspects to it it has the fact that it's a prayer so there's the near of the fact that it's a prayer it's a general prayer and also it has the fact contained within the fact that he's praying in the time that it's a fard prayer so he's removing the niyyah of it being fard, right? And what is left for him now is that it's a nafal prayer, that, or that the prayer still remains. So he hasn't invalidated his prayer. Because he, all he did, he removed the aspect from the niyyah, the fard part. But the part that it was a prayer, it was a prayer that remains. So that's why he can go to being a nafal. So a person, like we said, he's praying fard by himself, right? He has a situation. He's heard something outside. He's worried that somebody's going to steal his car. Okay, or something of that situation. So he changes now his intention to make it into a nafal. It's allowed if there is enough time for him to make his prayer up within the time. The author is saying it's allowed. Okay. Another clear example that the ulama give, they say, for example, if somebody's praying the fard by himself, he's praying by himself in the masjid because the jama'ah had finished. He missed the jama'ah. But then, as he's praying, another jama'ah comes. They say in this situation, he can change quickly to nafal, his fad to nafal, finish the nafal, and then join the jama'ah. Why, why should he do this? To get the virtue of joining the congregation, to get the virtue of praying with the congregation. So they say this is a clear example of doing this. And they define this as al intiqal min al mu'ayyin ila al mutlaq. That the niyyah is going from. In, من المعين, from specific prayer, which is the fard, to al-mutlaq, which is a nafal. Nafal without a cause or a reason, just a general nafal. Okay, this is intiqal min al-mu'ayyin, from specific ila al-mutlaq, to a general salah, an open salah. How far does he have to, the person have to be in the prayer to change? Very good. So if the person, he can do it wherever he is. He can do it wherever he is, wherever he is in the prayer, okay? And also, the person doesn't have to, in this situation, he doesn't have to do it in the sense of changing his niyyah. So he's praying the fard, he sees a jama'ah now joined in front of him. He doesn't have to make it nafal, finish the nafal, then go and join them. He can do, just break the prayer if he wants to. He can break his fard, which in other situations is something which is not permitted. But here it's permitted, why? Because he's going to that which is better. Where is the proof for this? Shaykh Uthaymin ta'ala He says, if you remember the companions radiallahu anhum, when they were making hajj, hajjul ifrad, the hajj, which is not mutamatta', the Prophet sallallahu said, leave that and make it into hajj al mutamatta', because hajj al mutamatta' has more virtue and more actions. So the Prophet sallallahu told them to break that act of worship, okay? and to make it into mutamatta'. So likewise here in the prayer, the person is able to, allowed to, if he wants to, break his fad prayer, and then go ahead and join the prayer uh, in congregation that is in front of them. Break the prayer? Break, break. Yeah, come out of it completely. Because what the author was talking about, the author is talking about taking it from fad to nafal. So he's in his prayer, he doesn't leave his prayer, okay, but what he's doing, he's changing the intention. So he sees a jama'ah in front of him that he wants to join. So what he does, he says to himself, I'm going to make this a nafal prayer now, his intention. So his fard prayer that he was praying is no more fard. He made it into a nafal prayer. So that's what the author was talking about. I gave further example that if you wanted to, you didn't have to do that. You don't have to go from fard to nafal. Uthaymin says you can break the act of worship itself. Assalamu alaikum wa assalamu alaikum wa And start the other act of worship, which is the congregation. Tayyib. 
The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, min fardin ila fardin batala. He says, if the person changes from his intention, listen to the word carefully, he's not saying that from the action, he's saying with intention. If the person changes with intention from one fard to another fard, then this causes the salah, okay, or causes the salah to be invalid, causes the fard salah to be invalid. So the person is doing mu'ayyin, specific to specific. That's not allowed because they're of the same level. We said mu'ayyin, specific to mutlaq, to open nafal is allowed because it's from top down, from that which is uh, uh, higher to lower is allowed. But this, these are equal. Mu'ayyin and mu'ayyin, fard and fard is equal. Okay? Any salah which is specific to another specific is not allowed. So this person, he wants to change his niyyah from one fard to another fard. He's praying asr, but he remembered, uh, I prayed dhuhr in the wrong way. I forgot to make wudu. Or I forgot to pray dhuhr. Right? So now he wants to break his asr prayer. Not cut off the asr prayer, just change with niyyah. He wants to change the niyyah of the asr prayer to the niyyah of the dhuhr prayer. This is not allowed. Okay? This is not allowed. Why is it not allowed? Because his niyyah is not there from the beginning of the prayer. Okay? For the Salatul Ma'ayyin, you have to have the niyyah there from the beginning of the prayer. However, Sheikh uh, Amir Bahjat, he says in his explanation that the author didn't say Batalat. If he said Batalat, it would mean that the prayer itself would become invalid. So what's happened? This person, if he's in the Salah, He's praying Asr and he says, you know what, I need to make it into Dhuhr. So he changes his niyyah. Now neither of these two fad are going to be accepted from him, but it will be accepted as a nafil. Because, that, because the salah remains, the niyyah of the salah remains. But what he's invalidated is the niyyah of it being fard. This is what the author is, in, is uh, included in what the author is saying. And Sheikh Ahmed Khalil makes an important point. He says, look, the author is not talking about somebody who breaks the prayer and then makes a new niyyah with a new takbirat al-hiram because this is obviously allowed, right? If the person came out of the prayer, makes a new niyyah and a new takbirat al-hiram, this would be allowed. He's talking about the person within the same prayer, he just changes his niyyah from being uh, asr fad, he changes it to being dhuhr fad. This is not allowed, okay? So from mu'ayyin to mu'ayyin is not allowed, nor is allowed from mutlaq to mu'ayyin. Mutlaq meaning open nafal, to mu'ayyin, to a specific salah. That's not allowed e either, okay? But from mu'ayyin, from up to down, from specific to non-specific is allowed. From mu'ayyin to mutlaq is allowed in the changing of niyyah. Mu'ayyin to mu'ayyin is not allowed because they're equal. So any salah which is specific to another salah which is a specific salah, like you go from fard to witr, even though witr is not fard, but because it's a specific salah, it's not allowed, okay? Mutlaq to mutlaq is not allowed. Uh, mutlaq to mutlaq wouldn't happen, really. Okay, but it's allowed, it's allowed. Mutlaq to mutlaq is allowed, yeah. So, um, from mu'ayyin to mutlaq is allowed, but not from mutlaq to mu'ayyin. Tayyib? وَيَجِبُ نِيَةُ الْإِمَامَةِ وَالْإِتِّمَامِ It's imperative that when Salat al-Jama'ah is taking place, that the Imam has the niyyah that he's being the Imam and the ones who are praying behind him have the intention that they are being the ma'moom, that they are being the followers. Why? Because it's a congregation salah and each one of them has its rulings. And the only way the rulings are differentiated is based upon the niyyah. Okay? So the niyyah, the Imam has to have a niyyah that he's being the Imam and the ma'moom have to have niyyah that they are being ma'moom. وَإِن نَوَى الْمُنْفَرِدَ الْإِتِمَامِ لَمْ تصح. If a person is praying by himself, munfarid, and then he wants, whilst he's praying that, to become now a follower, this is not valid, right? So the person, again, he's praying by himself, munfarid, then he sees a jama'ah in front of him. That he wants to go from being munfarid, praying alone, to being a follower of that jama'ah, of that imam. It's not allowed, the author is saying. Why? What do you think? Because the niyyah wasn't there from the beginning, right? The niyyah of being the imam or being the follower has to be there from the beginning, according to this opinion of the author. 
If you did hold the other opinion, which is that it's allowed, there is another opinion, that it's allowed, what do you have to ensure doesn't take place for you? So you're changing your intention from being the munfarid to now being a follower. So you haven't broken your salah. You're just changing your intention within the salah. That I'm now, at the moment I'm munfarid, but I've seen the jama'ah or I heard the jama'ah. Now I want to go and continue my prayer with the jama'ah. What do you have to ensure it happens? Huh? It's going to be, it has to be a fard prayer. You cannot, very good point. You cannot change your intentions unless there's a real reason and, and unless it's a fard prayer. We'll, we'll speak a bit more about that. It has to be the same prayer, which are all kind of obvious things, but it's good. Jazakallah khair. Huh? Are you allowed to move? It's to do with the moving. You shouldn't turn away from the qibla, right? Because if the jama'ah is behind you, turning away from the qibla to get to them will break your salah, okay? If you held the opinion that you're allowed to do it in the first place. But our author and the humble scholars, they say it's not allowed, okay? Can you walk backwards? Some say yeah, but some say no. Because um, they say movement is allowed for the benefit of the prayer. But here, I'm not sure. The author, he says, Kaniyati imamatihi fardan. Similar to this situation, not allowing him to go from munfarid to being a follower, that's not allowed, right? According to the author. He said, likewise, it's not allowed for the munfarid to go from being munfarid to an imam. He's praying by himself. Somebody comes and taps him on the shoulder and wants to pray with him, okay? The author's opinion that this is not allowed in the Fad Salah. It's not allowed in the Fad Salah. And in fact, it's the opinion of the Madhab that it's not allowed in the Fad or the Nafal, okay? So you're praying by yourself, someone comes and taps you, wants, to be the, wants you to be Imam, you're not allowed to, why? Because you didn't make the intention from the beginning, okay? So the Madhab says in both scenarios, whether it's Nafal prayer or Fad prayer, you cannot be an Imam. Okay, the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, if you notice, he says in the fard. So that shows us that his opinion in the nafal is that it's allowed. Okay, that in the nafal you're allowed to be an imam. You can change your intention from praying by yourself. Someone comes and taps you on the shoulder. Now you can change the intention to being an imam. Why did he have this opinion and others who agreed with him? Because in Bukhari and Muslim, we have that the Prophet ﷺ was praying to Hajjid and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma came and joined the Prophet ﷺ sometime into the Salah, sometime after the Salah had started. So here's a clear proof for the Nafil that the Prophet ﷺ, that you can, like the Prophet ﷺ did, he changed his intention from being the one who was Munfarid, praying by himself, to becoming an Imam. Okay? As a reply to this, some of the Hanbali scholars, they say it's not like this because the Prophet ﷺ knew or understood that Ibn Abbas was going to come and join him. So this is their reply. They said, no, the Prophet ﷺ in this situation, he knew somehow, like maybe he saw Ibn Abbas making wudu or something. So when he started his prayer, he knew that he was going to come to join him. So he already had the intention of being the Imam. Allah knows best. Tayyip. So our author says, it's not allowed in fard, right? But it's allowed in nafil, right? But the madhab says, both cases not allowed. Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, both cases are allowed. The complete opposite, right? Of the madhab. Why? Because he says the qa'idah, the rule which is known, that that which is allowed, in, that which is permissible in the nafal, is permissible in the fard, unless there is an evidence for exclusion. That's the rule, right? مَا ثَبَتَ فِي النَّفَلْ ثَبَتَ فِي الْفَرْضِ إِلَّا بِالدَّلِيلِ مَا ثَبَتَ فِي النَّفَلْ That which is established as permissible in the nafal, ثَبَتَ فِي الْفَرْضِ إِلَّا بِالدَّلِيلِ Is allowed in the fard, unless there is a evidence to show a difference. طيب. وَإِنْ إِنْفَرَدَ مُؤْتَمٌ بِلَا عُذْرٍ بطلت. If the person who is a follower of the Imam, he breaks away from being a follower without reason, then his salah is going to be invalid. So he's not allowed to break away as being the follower of the Imam, the Ma'mum, without reason. The reasons they mention are those reasons which allowed you to leave Salatul Jama'ah. That if you have an excuse for not attending to Salatul Jama'ah, or leaving the Salat al Jama'ah, these are the reasons. From them, they say, if a person is desperate to go to the bathroom, right? Or he's extremely hungry and food is being offered to him whilst he's extremely hungry. So, in this situation, he doesn't have to pray with the Jama'ah. 
Okay, he's allowed to eat because if he doesn't eat, he won't be able to concentrate in the salah. Likewise, if he doesn't go to the bathroom, he won't be able to concentrate in the salah. Another reason they give is, for example, if a person prays a salah which is too long, the imam's recitation is way too long because in Bukhari and Muslim on the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabir, radiallahu anhu, he prayed with the companions behind him, Surah Al-Baqarah. <laughs> Surah Al-Baqarah. And you know how they pray with khushu and tadabbur, not fast. So maybe you could say four or five hours of recitation. So one of the companions, he broke away from this, right? Because he couldn't take it, it was too much for him. And they say to him, Nafaqta, you've become a munafiq, you broke away from the imam. He said, La Rasulullah He said, for sure I'm going to complain to the Prophet And he went and complained to the Prophet The Prophet got Mu'ad and he was angry with him. He said, Afatanun anta ya Mu'ad? Oh Mu'ad, are you being somebody who's putting the people to trial? Are you trying to push them away from the religion by praying so long and making it difficult? So this is another reason that the ulama they give. But people, they make this different in their minds. The imam, he prays just, uh, just uh, so, uh, Surah Al-Amma, they say it's too long. And they want to break. No. You have to look back at what was the norm, what was the understanding of the companions. Surah Al-Baqarah. Not the su- small surahs that we have. So you can't break away just because the imam has done 10 minutes. Right? Tayyib. وَتَبْتُلُوا صَلَاةُ مَعْمُونَ بِبُطْلَانِ صَلَاةِ إِمَامِهِ بِلَا إِسْتِخْلَافِ He's saying, the author is saying, may Allah have mercy upon him, that the salat of the ma'moon, the followers, their prayer is going to be invalid by that which makes the imam's prayer invalid. And you cannot make istikhlaf. Right? I'll explain this. So if the imam's prayer becomes invalid due to breaking wudu or something, then your prayer is also going to become invalid. Okay? This is the author's opinion. And you cannot make istikhlaf. Istikhlaf is that the imam, he brings somebody from behind him to continue the prayer. Why can you make istikhlaf? Why do you think the author is saying this? It wasn't the intention. That's one interesting point. Any other points? But if you look into the wording of the imam, it's as though he's saying if the, if the salah of the imam didn't become invalid, then he, came, he can make his tikhlaf. So here this is an exception for the change of the intention. Okay, here's an exception. The intention can be changed in this situation if the imam brings you forward. But he's saying if the imam's prayer becomes invalid, then he can't do that. Why? Because if the imam's prayer is invalid, then everybody behind him prayer is in, invalid. This is what he's trying to establish, right? So there's, there's no istikhlaf here. The istikhlaf in the madhab, bringing somebody behind you, is in two situations. The first of them is that the imam feels that, or he comes to know that he cannot do something from the arkan or the wajibat. He cannot do the pillars or the rukan, nor can he do that which is obligatory in the prayer. He feels now for whatever reason he can't make a ruku. He's had a sudden pain in his back. So in this situation, he can make, make istikhlaf. Because if he continues to pray, Without making the ruku, the salah is not going to be valid, right? So he's had a sharp pain in his back. He knows his situation, that I'm not going to be able to do the ruku, so I pull somebody from behind. In this situation, istikhlaf can be made. Second situation is that the person, the imam, he feels that my wudu is going to break. So before it breaks, he brings somebody in. Okay, he brings somebody in and they can make istikhlaf in that situation. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahu ta'ala, he said that the imams breaking of his salah doesn't invalidate the, the doesn't invalidate the ones behind him why does he say this because in bukhari and muslim there's that narration with the prophet sallallahu was mentioning about people who pray like corrupt imams and they pray badly so the prophet sallallahu said fa in asabu falakum walahum if they do correctly in their prayer then the reward is for you and for them wa in akhtau falakum but if they make a mistake in the prayer, they invalidate the prayer, then the reward is for you, but not for them. So here there's no invalidation mentioned that your salah behind somebody who prays incorrectly is going to be invalidated, right? So if the imam, he did something which invalidates his salah, it doesn't invalidate your salah, meaning you can carry on and complete the salah in the way that you want to, okay? This is Ibn Taymiyyah's opinion. And also Imam al to support this, he has the uh, author of Uthman, radiyallahu anhu, annahu salla bin nas, wa huwa junub nasiyan, fa'ada salah wa lam yu'idu. Imam al he mentioned that 
uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu prayed with the people as an imam while he was in the state of Janaba. But he had forgotten that he was in the state of Janaba. So he repeated his prayer and the people behind him, once they finished, they didn't repeat the prayer. Right? So this kind of supports what Ibn Taymiyyah is saying. However, the opinion of the Madhab, as the Imam mentioned, is that if the Imam's salah becomes invalid, then also does the uh, ma'mum behind, and they cannot make istikhlaf. وَإِنْ أَحْرَمَ إِمَامُ الْحَيِّ بِمَنْ أَحْرَمَ بِهِمْ نَائِبُهُ وَعَادَ وَعَادَ نَائِبُهُ مُؤْتَمًا صح. He's saying here, the author may have mercy upon him, that if the Imam al Hay, the Imam al Hay is who, the one who is uh, positioned as the Imam of the area or the Imam of the local masjid, you may say. He's given that position, right? If this person starts the prayer and he has a na'ib, he has like a mu'adhin, he starts the prayer, he's allowed now. No. If this Imam al Hay, okay. وَإِنْ أَحْرَمَا إِمَامُ الْحَيِّ بِمَنْ أَحْرَمَ بِهِمْ نَائِبُهُ وَعَادَ النَّائِبُهُ مُؤْتَمًا صَحْ وَإِنْ أَحْرَمَا إِمَامُ الْحَيِّ بِمَنْ أَحْرَمَا بِهِمْ طيب This situation, the Imam al-Hay, the specified Imam, he's late for whatever reason, right? He's delayed to the Salah. So his representative, the Mu'adhin for example, leads the people in prayer. Now this Imam al-Hay, if he wishes to, when he comes to the Salah and the people have already prayed one rak'ah or two rak'ah or whatever, he has the right to pull the na'ib, to pull the uh, representative back and for him to continue with the prayer. It's not recommended that he does this because it causes confusion. But he's allowed to if he wants to do so. Okay? He's allowed to if he wants to do so. Tayyib? Does he have to wait for a specific time before he kicks in? No. Any time he wants, he can, he, can take, he can take over the salah. But only if he's Imam al hayy Only if he's the Imam of the uh, designated as the Imam of the locality. What about, so the Imam, he comes to pray in this situation where he's late, right? What does the congregation do with regards to the amount of raka'at? Let's say the Imam, he missed two raka'at, right? There's two left. But if the congregation follows him now, they're going to end up praying six, yeah? So what do they do? They can say salam after four. And they can pray by themselves, right? They can just make the salam after four. So they pray two with the imam and they make the salim. Or they can sit in tashahud and wait for the imam to finish the two and make taslim, right? Or as Mutlaq Jasir says, Hafidahullah, they can bring one from their own congregation, from the congregation and make him also imam. So that's why I said in the situation you can have three imams in one salah. Okay, in this situation. Because you had the Imam who was the representative of Imam al hayy Then you had the Imam who turned up late. And now you have the one who, that they are pulling in from the congregation if they wanted to do so. The third one. He finishes for them. He just comes in and finishes the Salah for them. Finishes the Salah for the congregation as an Imam. So they finished. The, they finished the point is that they finished in congregation. So he stands next to the, the high Imam. No, no. Not next to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think this situation will ever happen because he'll be thrown out of the window. He'll be thrown out of the window. But this is the ulema, they mention it just to confuse us. May Allah bless them. Ameen. With that point, we come to the end of what the Imam wanted to mention with regards to the conditions of the salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us understand and to benefit. Any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. That which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have any questions, then feel free. Can somebody check the phones for the sisters if they have any questions?